It is half past 10 on a casual, I was gonna say Monday, it's not Monday, it's Wednesday. On a casual Wednesday morning and I have just finished re-watching a Jack Edwards video that I hadn't watched in ages and I was like, you know what? This, like, I forgot that this was a cool concept. It's basically the video where he logs every book he owns or is like interested in reading onto Goodreads. He sees what the average rating for each one was and then he read the best rated and the worst rated on like his entire TBR list that he owned. But I reorganized my bookshelf like two days ago and I kind of want to do it. I kind of want to do it. For the first time in like a million years, this bookshelf is now somewhat organized. I mean, the floor is a complete state, but we're not going to look at that. We are going to look instead at the lovely bookshelf. So I am going to log every single book on this shelf onto my to be read list on Goodreads. And then it'll churn out some numbers for me and we can have a look at which is the most the most rated, the best rated, and which is the worst rated. If it comes out with a book that I have already read, if it is a book that I have read like before a year ago, I'm gonna reread it and then get like a refreshed opinion. If it's one that I have read this year, so from January 21, then I will tell you my rating on it because I'll have that on Goodreads because I've only logged books um, from January for me. And then I'm gonna just read the second most high or low rated one. I'm also just gonna make the point that I am gonna be ignoring this top shelf up here because they are all my dad's and while I am interested in reading most of them, I wouldn't necessarily consider them all to be like pressing. I'm also not gonna be considering this last shelf down here because it's like mostly childhood books and things like that. So gonna quickly make some predictions. So for the best rated book, I think it's gonna be something from this section here. So my like, there's not really much organization on these shelves, but this section is like classics and historical fiction. So I think it could be something like Rebecca, A Tale of Two Cities, um, what's this, Pride and Prejudice, something like that. It could very likely be something from The Shadowhunter collection i'm not really sure what to call all it's just the shadow hunter books isn't it um i'm really scared it's going to be something like city of heavenly fire because i've only read these three so i've still got these to go and then obviously these so i don't want to read the last book in a series but i have a feeling it's going to be something like that and it's going to be really annoying or i think it could be something from the northern lights collection for the worst rated book i'm thinking it might potentially be something middle grade or younger because i do have a couple like this series here is the witch trade series i think it's called the witch trade series i mean the first one's the witch trade so i just refer to it as that i love this series um there's some childhood favorites but i think potentially because they're younger books it might be badly rated i don't know and then i think it could be the doom spell duology i think there might be more no there's a third one in this but i read the first one like i'm able to read the second might end up reading the second in this video okay so i don't know how to like re-log books on goodreads because i know that you can do and i know you can like register as having read it a few times. I'm not sure how to do that. So I've just got um, all of the books on my Goodreads in this one section and I'm gonna just average rating them all. So that is all of the books that I've read this year and all of the books on my bookshelf. Okay, average rating, best to worst. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Oh. So this is the Dear Evan Hansen, like the playbook, the script. Um, I was originally really excited for this. I got it as a present. And then I also got the actual novel as a present. And I read the novel this year and I didn't like it. I just, I just, I didn't like it at all. I'll talk more about it in my like yearly roundup. I'm not sure if this is coming out before or after that, but this is the playbook, the script, the complete book and lyrics. So I'm hoping this will be better. I mean, it's got an average rating of 4.68. I can't believe that out of all of the books I've read this year, out of all the books I own, that has the highest. I'm really shocked. Below that, we've got The Crooked Kingdom, which is the second book in The Six of Crows. I think I probably could have predicted that if, I, if I'd have actually tried harder. The Clockwork Princess, below that, yep. I knew there'd be some form of Shadow Hunter book up there. I thought it was gonna be Mortal Instruments, but I'm very excited for the Infernal Devices. Then The Calling of Marvin Crow, Wondersmith. I'm really excited for that. That's the second book in the Nevermore series. Um, I love Nevermore. I really want to reread that one. Wish that one had been top, actually. And then Murder Most Unladylike. And then we've got more Six of Crows, Clockwork Prince, more Murder Most Unladylike. So the top rated one that I'm gonna be reading is the playbook of Dear Evan Hansen. Right, how do I get this going the other way? Okay, here we go. 
No way. No way. Are you kidding? It's the One Memory of Flora Banks, which is a beautiful book. I have been looking to reread that actually. I can't believe that that's so low. Out of all of the books I own, that. Then we've got a Second Honeymoon in the Stepmother's Support Group. The Mitford Murders. Um, I mean, I put, I gave it three stars and it's averaged at 3.51. Landline by Romy Rao. I'm really excited for that one actually. A World Between Us by Lydia Sison. Really like that one. It's an excuse to reread Flora, I guess. Um, I'm really excited for that one actually. Maddening. Absolutely maddening. Okay, well, I'm gonna come back with my opinions on the books then. Only one of them is a reread. One of them, it feels like it's a reread, it's not, but that's fine. I'm quite shocked that I'm way more excited to read my lowest rated book than my highest rated one. I just, I think it's just because you've got like loads of musical theatre kids that have gone. I love Dear Evan Hansen and then read it and then imagined the musical, but like, obviously it's I don't know, it's, it's the play, but it's not the musical. I don't know. Maybe I'll really love it though, maybe I will. So I've just come downstairs to make myself some noodles for lunch, I think. And I'm gonna get started on this while I do so. I've decided I'm not gonna say anything until I finished it now because I'm actually so mad about it, it's kind of funny. So I'm just stopping. I'm putting all of my opinions to one side until, you know, I have finished it and I'm gonna make my own judgment then. Okay, right. So, Dear Evan Hansen, the highest rated book on my entire bookshelf, like everything. I logged 90 books this morning and I already had 20 books on there. This one, for Goodreads reviewers, for good for good readers users, managed to top all of them and I don't know how. So, Dear Evan Hansen is about a boy who I hate, basically. Dear Evan Hansen is about a boy called Evan who is going to therapy and his therapist tells him to write letters to himself to kind of get through his emotions and everything. The weird kid at school finds one of these letters, puts it in his pocket and then commits suicide and everyone therefore thinks that he had written this letter for Evan and that he and Evan were best friends and Evan goes along with it. He goes along with it. I thought it was better than the novel. I wasn't expecting that. I think because I was hearing the songs in my head and I was imagining Ben Platt as Evan, it was better for me because I believe Evan is a truly unlikable character. We like flawed characters, okay? We like flawed characters, they're good. We need a little bit of, oh, I don't agree with what you're doing. Evan doesn't do one thing in this book that I agree with and I hate him. He's a whiny little brat the whole way through. However, I really love Ben Platt. So as I'm imagining Ben Platt as Evan in this, which I didn't do in the novel, I'm not sure why, I then therefore liked Evan a little bit more. I think he came across as more of like a um, awkward, cute guy in this rather than the incel that I think he did kind of border on in the novel or I just really didn't like him in that I really really did not this one was really quick it's like 160 pages or something it took me about like barely over an hour potentially under it I'm not entirely sure but literally no time at all whereas the novel took me a little bit of a while to get through I think that I got a bit bugged down with the I don't know, there was more description in it obviously because this was a play, so I didn't really get that. That made me like flow through it a lot quicker and as well the music, um, I didn't realise how the music really elevated the story. I thought that Alana in this was unnecessary and felt like she'd just been shoved in there to create an extra character. I didn't feel she was necessary in the slightest, whereas she did feel more in the book. Overall, I'm gonna give this a three star rating because I enjoyed it. Like two stars for me is a not really enjoying because it's lower than a half and then three stars, it's over a half. I did enjoy it, I enjoyed it. Whereas the novel for me was actually two stars. I don't feel like anyone learns any lessons from it. And as well, I, I mentioned before that I really like the music. So, like You Will Be Found is one of my favorite musical theater songs ever. I think it's beautiful, but reading it like in the context of this, because although I knew where it came in the musical, I've never watched it and this is my first sort of experience as like a linear plot of the musical for me it was just sort of like a bubble of dear evan hansen the placement and the like the context for it is literally just him lying to a bunch of people i i just don't like him i think he's an irritating 
I think he's irritating. I do believe that this is rated so highly because the people that only read the playbook are people that already enjoy the musical. These people are kind of predisposed to enjoying it more. They know the story and they love it and that's why they rate it so highly. Whereas I think the novel is rated lower because people pick it up as a book and they are more critical of it. Three stars, low three stars as well. Like if we had half star ratings, it would like it would be bordering on two and a half. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad that the story has somewhat not been rectified by any means, but um, been put in a manner in which I have enjoyed it more than the novel, but I'm just not interested in it. So I am now going to move on to reading The One Memory of Flora Banks. And I know I'm going to enjoy it because I've read it before and I can't wait to reread it. I think I read it two years ago or something two and a half years ago. I've just finished reading the worst rated book on my bookshelf and I can see why it is not for everybody and I can see why people might give it a low rating, but I love it. I love this book so much. It's one of those four stars, but bordering on five star reviews. I think the only reason it's not five stars for me is it's just, it's lacking a little bit of revenge on the person that wrongs Flora. The One Memory of Flora Banks is an amnesia story. Did I say that right? Amnesia? Yeah. She went through surgery when she was 10 and she lost her ability to make new memories when they took out a brain tumour, but then one day she kisses her best friend's boyfriend, about to be ex-boyfriend, and remembers it like the next day or within a few hours because she kind of forgets every few hours. The reason I understand why some people don't like it is because it is written in, I think, a very clever way and it breaks up the story a lot as if you're reading it and you're Flora. It's very jumpy, it repeats a lot of things that she looks down and she reads on her hands that she's written for herself. She's got a tattoo saying Flora be brave, so a lot of the um, like the paragraphs and that start with Flora be brave. A lot of the time she feels like she is a 10 year old in a 17 year old's body and I think that's really reflected in the writing. It kind of seems very childlike and explorative, like she's really looking to explore the world or she begins to do so as the story progresses. I think this is just such a wonderful young adult coming of age story. I honestly really recommend this book. I loved it just as much this time as I did the first time. I think it's so cute and lovely and I, I cannot believe it was rated like Three point, it wasn't rated that low. I think it was like 3.3 .3 on Goodreads, but that's too low, that's too low. I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't recommend it. This was the lowest rated book on my bookshelf and I would recommend it to literally anyone ever. Maybe not, maybe not anyone, but a lot of people, a lot of people. This was a four, probably 4.5 stars and this would be a three, potentially 2.5 actually. So I'm really shocked that this came out as like 4.5 six or seven and this was 3.3 .3. absolutely disgusting but thank you very much for coming along with me today in my day of reading i mean i only read two books so it wasn't really like a day of reading i really liked seeing what books were considered um better than others like it for the most part it shocked me but then there are a few that i kind of predicted but i wish there were more things that i could try with this sort of format but i don't really know if there is maybe i'll try it on storygraph or something and maybe i'll see if people rate books differently on storygraph they do on goodreads so thank you for watching i hope you have a really lovely day and basically just read the one memory of flora banks uh, if, you, if that's the only thing you take away from this i will not be sad mm -hmm.